Welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio, and I'm real glad that you could uh, join us again. Returning guest, Dr. Maria Miller, is with us. She's Section Chief at Nicholas Children's Pediatric Care Centers, returning to talk with us about the increase in childhood obesity that is due to the increased anxiety and physical inactivity in children during this pandemic. Welcome back to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Miller. Thank you so much. Um, Section Chief there at Nicholas Children's Pediatric Care Centers. Give our listeners who may not be familiar with you uh, when you were here before as a contributor, give us a bit of your background, and then let's talk about this increase in childhood obesity. Yes, certainly. Um, So as you said, I've been working with Nicholas Children's Hospital now for approximately eight years. Uh, We're located in Coral Gables, Florida, and um, and I'm basically the chief of the continuity clinic there. Um, We have four uh, different uh, primary care centers throughout South Florida. It's a pleasure to to be here and speak about this very important topic. Childhood obesity, is this a a major problem? You know, we see large kids all the time. Is this something that is becoming more and more prevalent? Yes, it's increased significantly and it is now recognized as a public health crisis. Uh Um, So even prior to COVID, um, you know, we were having uh, problems with Mm -hmm. the, the increase in childhood obesity. What were some of the contributing factors before the pandemic? I'm sure we all have heard of at least a few of them. So mostly, you know, inactivity um, as well as uh, poor nutrition and and diet. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think post-COVID, you know, the fact that a lot of these kids were in social isolation, you know, they had to be um, uh, safe. So they they were home and and there was less activity due to increased, you know, screen time Mm -hmm. um, for school and also because they couldn't leave the house. Um, There weren't as many kids participating in sports. Um, so, so we have seen a significant increase in the, the number of kids um, that, that are now you know, overweight and, and obese. Um, so, so the problem has always been, right, the diet and the exercise, but mm-hmm. this has only made it, made it worse. So we have the, uh, the problem of diet, exercise, that was always a problem, um, and inactivity, which is always a problem, but there is an increased amount of inactivity, especially now with kids being out of school and out of sports and at the house. Is inactivity the only uh, contributing factor as far as the pandemic? So I think the other factor is that a lot of these kids are um, in virtual school, right? So they're at home. So they have access to the refrigerator, mm-hmm. right? And to the pantry um, throughout the day, which is a little different than, you know, obviously when you're in school that you have your set snack time and your set lunch time. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of kids also now, you know, mental health, there's a lot of mental health problems, anxiety, you know, related to, to the pandemic. And, and sometimes um, the increase in, in their intake is also due to that. You know, they're eating not because they're necessarily hungry. It's just a, a anxiety driven. Um, so there's a lot of factors that contribute to, um, to the, the increase in, in weight. You know, kids uh, often suffer some type of anxiety anyway, just in normal, you know, growing up, going through adolescence and, and young childhood. Uh, is some of the anxiety, the lack of socialization with kids their own age, you know, other than on the screen or on the telephone or something like that or texting, is that part of is it an isolation anxiety? A lot of adults have reported uh, feeling isolated and anxious due to uh, the pandemic. Right. It's, it's a uh, combination of things. I think for the teenagers, especially, it's been very hard because that's, you know, a time where they um, need to have that interaction with friends. They're kind of, you know, discovering who they are and, and um, being part of uh, having this uh, network, um, a social network is so important. Right. So a lot of them are, are um, suffering from anxiety and depression. Anxiety and depression go hand in hand. So um, it, it's it's a difficult time for them. And, and like I said, in particularly that age group has had um, a, you know, a big um, impact, but it also affects younger kids as well. Um, and the younger kids, not only, you know, are they uh, not able to, um, you know, socialize and be around some of the other kids, but they're also having a, a tough time um, with the virtual learning. Um, so, you know, not doing well in school, that affects their mental health as well. Right. Um, uh, it just creates a lot of added stress 
to the stress that we're already um, living. I am not one who has lived through a, a pandemic. I think the worst, you know, we've that I've seen is, you know, swine flu, uh, bird flu, maybe Ebola. The sense of having, I guess, at that age, your whole life ahead of you and not being told on a daily basis that that may not be the case, as we're being told during this pandemic, do you think that plays a significant part in the mental health of some of our youth? Yes, yes, correct. I think, you know, a, a, a lot of these kids um, uh, that had predisposing um, uh, conditions and, and a lot of these kids that suffered from anxiety to begin with, right, um, this has only, um, only made it worse um, and and I think um, one of the, the issues that, that I try to, to talk to my parents about or try to explain to them that it, it's so important um, that despite us living through, you know, all these um, changes and, and these tough times, um, it's important that um, we model, right, um, certain behaviors for our children, right? Mm -hmm. And not only um, do we want to model, um, you know, for example, a lot of parents say, well, my kid won't get off, um, you know, the... Um, the iPad or won't get off of the, the phone. Um, but then you have the child saying, well, mom, you're on the phone all day, right? Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, modeling behavior and the same thing with physical uh, you know, activity. If they see that, you know, as parents, we're not physically active, then um, then they're not, you know, um, apt to, mm -hmm. to want to be um, physically active. So I think it's very important for us as parents to model um, the behavior that we want um, our children to to have and to follow. Yeah. If they follow that behavior, yeah. obviously there won't be as many chronic problems later in life. Obesity causes many Correct. problems, diabetes, uh, high blood pressure, all of these things sometimes start in childhood, Correct. but habits um, make it sometimes irreversible in adult life. Correct. Like you said, you know, obesity, um, you know, puts you at high risk for so many uh, conditions, chronic conditions, high blood pressure, abnormal lipid levels, metabolic syndrome, diabetes, asthma, sleep apnea, I mean, you name it. Um, it and, you know, unfortunately, it, it also puts you at higher risk um, of having severe um, complications of COVID. Um, so we've seen that, right? So kids, uh, aside from chronic medical um, conditions like immunosuppression and cancer, um, you know, there are studies that have shown that um, that just being obese puts you at, at high risk. It's like number third cause, uh, three cause. Um, so it is, you know, of extreme importance um, that, you know, that we, we target this. And the way to do that is, you know, cutting back on sugary drinks, increasing mm -hmm. fruit and vegetables, um, in your diet, increasing physical activity. With the fruit and vegetables, I always tell parents, and I think this is something that, you know, we can, we can all do, um, to picture their plate, right? So half of the plate should be fruits and vegetables, and then a quarter of it protein and the other quarter carbs. Um, so there's less room for, you know, for um, less healthy food. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the target is to increase fruits, vegetables, water, milk, and, and decrease the number of processed foods, obviously less sugar, um, it, and it's just education, 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 um, because um, the more we educate our parents uh, on the importance of this, then the, the more results we'll see, right? Well, Dr. Mila, where can our listeners go online and get some advice as far as uh, starting the conversation with your kids about uh, healthy habits during the pandemic? And also maybe a little bit of advice about um, how to start that conversation with your health care provider about your kids. What um, what website would you suggest that we go to? So for the parents, I always recommend HealthyChildren.org. It's a website put up by the American Academy of Pediatrics. It has very good um, information. It's easy to understand, easy to follow. Um, uh, but they obviously give, um, you know, the kind of information that we want our parents to, um, to be in tune with and to, um, be practicing at home. So that's one of the ones that I, um, I really, uh, encourage parents to, to look into. Um, the other, the other thing that I always tell parents too, because not only is, you know, the, the diet in terms of the food that they eat important, but, um, you know, hydration is so important too. Um, if, you know, you think about it, 20% of uh, children in the U.S. don't drink water on any given day, right? So they do, you know, juices and sodas and, um, and water is what we want them to, to drink. Um, you know, sometimes I ask, how much water do you drink? Oh, I drink plenty of water. And so I said, well, you just, you know, tell me, like, roughly how many, um, cups of water do you drink a day? Oh, I'll have four cups of water a day. Well, four cups of water a day for, 
you know, a nine to 18 year old um, is not enough. Mm -hmm. They should be having at least eight cups of water a day, right? Which Mm -hmm. is about 64 ounces. So really, um, that's a big problem that kids are just not um, staying hydrated. They're not drinking enough. Um, A lot of kids come in and, you know, are suffering from headaches. And so I say, how much are you drinking? Um, Oh, it's not due to the water intake. And then you ask them and, you know, they're just not drinking enough. And a lot of them are, you know, being active um, and and should be drinking more. So that that goes together with the the diet. The the hydration is key. Um, And hydration, you know, not only um, is it important, but also what what are you drinking to keep hydrated, right? It's it's sugary drinks you shouldn't drink. A lot of, uh, you know, misconception is, oh, you know, my kid drinks milk. Is it plain milk? No, no, it's chocolate milk. Well, chocolate (laughs) milk is not ideal. Either. So, you know, like I said, it's just a lot of um, education. Well, Doctor, I appreciate you joining us here as always. I'm hoping that you'll come back in the not too distant future and give us some more uh, good information and advice as well. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with returning guest, Dr. Maria Miller. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.